Hello my fellow freedom builders and welcome back to the channel. My name is Hans Nielsen and the video today is about black swans. What is a black swan? Well, yesterday I made a video about how to prepare for a market crash. And in that video I talked about something called black swans. And uh, of course not the birds, you can see the, the picture here. Um, but a concept or a, a thing when we're talking about investments or pretty much anything in life, we can talk about black swans. And I've gotten several questions about what is these black swans and if I could elaborate a bit on these. And of course I can. Uh, so today's video is about what is it and what, ha what does it have to do with our investments. And at the end of the video, I'm going to uh, tell you a bit about how to know when black swans are over. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks as to how to act when these black swans are hitting the stock market. So, first of all, what is a black swan? Well, the concept or the metaphor was made famous by um, a guy called Nassim Nicholas Taleb. I think it is pronounced. You can see him here in the picture. He wrote a book that I will definitely recommend that you all read called The Black Swan. And in that uh, book, he is describing what it is, uh, how it affects our lives. And he describes how the metaphor uh, came upon him. Because um, about three, four hundred years ago, um, the black swan was actually m used as a metaphor uh, for most people in, in, in Europe. Where today we would say something like, yeah, the day pigs can fly or yeah, the day hell freezes over to, to tell that I don't think this is likely ever gonna happen and uh, back then three four hundred years ago uh, it was used uh, if if someone asked me um, a question that I think this will never this is never gonna happen I could say something like yeah the day you see a black swan because everybody knew that swans were white and black was the opposite of that and of course swans couldn't be black but then the first people come came to Australia and they actually found black swans and from then on, you cannot really use that metaphor anymore because now people knew that there were black swans. So that is where the metaphor derived from. Now, what is a black swan today? Because of course, we're not talking about the bird. And I'm going to give you a very quick, quick version here because um, the book is, is uh, they, they have a lot of examples and a lot of further explanations. But I am going to give you a very quick tour here. There are three things, three markers that has to be fulfilled for, for something to be a black swan event. It should be hard to predict. Uh, it should have a massive imp impact, either good or bad. It doesn't have to be bad. And later on, um, it should appear a lot more predictable. I'll give you some examples in a second. Um, in the book, he gives quite a funny example about a turkey. You know, the bird that, uh, that some people in the world eat for Thanksgiving. Because when a turkey is brought up in a turkey farm, um, it actually has quite a nice life. Uh, it gets plenty to eat and uh, people are nice to it and uh, it is treated quite well. And then all of a sudden one day, um, some guy comes in and chops its head off and, um, and makes it into dinner. Now, it had no way of predicting that because there was nothing it had ever experienced that could form some sort of idea that maybe someday uh, some guy is going to kill me. It had a massive impact on the turkey anyway. Um, and I'm not sure that turkeys uh, are, are predicting uh, things like this uh, is going to happen later on. But it is kind of the picture of what a black swan event is. It should be something that is so surprising to us that we have no way of predicting it because we have no frame of understanding about this problem because we don't know that we don't know it. Okay, some examples on this is, um, for instance, Bitcoins. Um, you all know Bitcoins. And when Bitcoin came into the world and exploded in price and popularity, uh, it was actually a black swan event because no one had predicted this. There had not been uh, 20 years before that there was someone saying, yes, we think that the result of the techno uh, technological uh, development in the world will result in uh, something called cryptocurrency. No one had ever thought about that. Uh, so that was, when we return to this, hard to predict. It had a massive impact, of course. Some would say good, some would say bad. And later on, 
large reports and PhDs have been written about uh, that of course we should have predicted this because of uh, the monetary situation and the technological situation and people are being professors today on this subject almost how cryptocurrencies of course came to be in the world but before that no one predicted that it could also be 9-11 um, the ev event you know with uh, World Trade Center in the United States um, no one saw it coming um, it had a massive impact badly of course and later on again a lot of scientists and, and researchers have found out that of course with the way the United States treated the world and the way uh, the the uh, Islamic terrorists were getting around in the world and so on and so forth of course this would be the result but no one saw it before the same with the internet I grew up in in the time before the internet and I was young in the 70s and the 80s and then um, when we when we guessed about the future none of us guessed about something called the internet or something that worked like the internet not even close and it had a massive impact and later on of course we could figure out that it would happen and the same with the housing crash and we could go on and on and on so these are black swan events and of course right now uh, I'm talking black swan events because we have the coronavirus um, that is disrupting our way of living or at least that is the threat and that is the reason why the stock markets are reacting the way it is. But before I get to the coronavirus and, and how we should react to that, I'll tell you about that in the end of the video, uh, how I think we should react to it. Um, I'll just tell you a bit more of the theories around why it is so hard for us to predict these extreme events. And uh, one of them, and uh, Taleb writes about that in his book, that, or there are actually two main reasons. One of them is that we as a human species, we are thinking in linear progressions and we forget the possibility of outliers. If we take number two here first. Um, I've shown this uh, model in my videos before and that is what we call a normal distribution. We're talking about it when when we discuss uh, standard deviations when trading and so on. And that is this statistical concept where we have a formula to we have a set of data and we can predict that 68% uh, of the data lies within one standard deviation and 95% of the uh, data set is within two standard deviations and something like 98 uh, point something percent is within three standard deviations. And then if someone tells me that this event has a three standard deviation uh, occurrence rate. Uh, I would say, all right, then it's 98% certain that it, that it happens. And that in my head, in my human brain is translated into then it is happening with certainty. Because when something has a highly likelihood of happening, it gets translated into then it will certainly happen. And the opposite way around, because if something is very very unlikely to happen like 0.13 percent or even less out in fifth or sixth uh, standard deviation then we tell ourselves this is not going to happen this is what we call an outlier this is something like the a market crash with a 50 percent drawdown one year or one year the market going up with 200 percent maybe we tell ourselves that this is not likely to happen. So in our brain, it gets translated into impossible, even though that it might happen once in a while. And a black swan event is something of these outliers here. And that is one of the reasons why we as a human species has so uh, such a hard time uh, predicting these because we are filtering them away and saying this is not likely to happen, uh, aka this is impossible. And much of the financial industry is actually built on this normal distribution model and uh, a lot of the option pricing and so on is built on the concept that if something is within three standard deviations it is practically 100 percent certain that it happens but when the outliers come that really that really uh, uh, shake up the entire financial world the other thing is that we think in linear progressions and you have all heard that the stock market over time gives us something like seven or eight or nine percent in yearly interest. Now, the human brain translates that into that we get seven to eight or nine percent every single year. 
Of course, we know with our logical sense that there will be drawdowns and there will be years with, with big losses. But if you look at the S&P 500 index here from 1872 to 2018, there are almost not a single year, maybe one or two, but next to none, no single year that gives us exactly seven or eight percent. They are almost all of them outliers and some of them are up around plus 55 percent. Some of them are down at a minus 30 or 40 percent. And this is at the end of the year. So it can't have been even wilder during the year. But this just shows that this is why so many traders and investors have a really hard time to uh, get their head wrapped around how the market works because our mind likes to think in this linear progression that if I work 10 hours and I get a fixed hourly wage, then how much do I earn in a month and in a year? But that's not how investing works. In, in investing works in a way that maybe one year you're making a million, but the next year you're losing 300,000. And these outliers are hard, hard for our brain to, to get wrapped around. So these are some of the uh, things that makes it hard for us to to foresee to predict the black swans. Now, you could discuss if um, the coronavirus that is running right now is actually a, a black swan event. If we go back here, we could say, is it hard to predict? Well, it is of course hard to predict exact when it would happen. But actually, the scientists and the researchers that are working with pandemic research, they have been telling us for years, this is, it's just a matter of time before it happens. And it will be bad. And actually, the coronavirus is not even that bad. They have, the, the, the scientists and researchers have predicted that some, something even worse could come with a, a way higher debt rate and so on. So right now we are down at around two to three percent. Some, someone say it's, it's actually a half, half a percent or one percent. But no matter what, it's actually pretty low compared to, for instance, Ebola or SARS or some of the other viruses that have been there. And it is only something like 20 years ago, 17 years ago, we had a virus like this when the SARS was in and actually killed quite a lot of people as well. So some people argue that the black swan event, the first thing hard to predict that we have actually predicted uh, that it would come. It is just the exact time we haven't predicted. There's no doubt that it is having a massive impact. Of course, the people that are getting ill, it is impacting them in a very bad way, but also it is um, disrupting our supply chain, uh, our way of living. There'll be people in quarantine, people that can't get to work uh, and so on and so forth. So it will definitely uh, affect uh, our way of living. Up until this point, us here in Europe and United States have maybe have been able to say, yeah, well, it's just some people in China that are getting ill. So it's not really something for us. But right now it is spreading widely, widely here in Europe and United States. Uh, and well, widely, maybe that's a hard work, but it is spreading and it is going pretty quickly. I'll show you a graph of that in a second. So right now, um, and that was actually predicted that it would happen. So right now it will impact our way of living as well. Personally, I'm not terribly uh, afraid of the virus itself. I'm relatively young and good health and so on. And so are my kids and my wife and so on. But um, there's no doubt that it will affect the economic growth. It will uh, affect some job numbers uh, and so on here in first and second quarter and maybe further on if it really spreads uh, out over the world. So how can when we when do we know when it's over? Well, when we're talking about the coronavirus uh, as a thing um, and not just black swans, let's just have a look down here. Um, here. I'll put a link to this uh, in, in the text below the video. But here uh, we have something called the COVID-19. That is the name of this string of coronavirus, COVID-19 info.live. And here we can see some graphs on the, uh, on, on the development of how many contaminated, how many deaths and so on. And right now we can see that we have just around uh, eight, uh, 84,000 deaths in the world. This actually measures a death rate of 3.4%, which is um, a bit higher than it was in the beginning. 
However, uh, this number might be lower because uh, there might be maybe uh, 200 or 500,000 people that actually has had the virus without dying from it and without having such severe implications that they had to see a doctor. So this number is the confirmed number, but it might actually be a lot higher. Now, normally when the media uh, sh uh, showed these graphs in the beginning, they showed it on a simple linear scale. And of course they did because that sells newspapers and, and attract people because um, a, a parabolic move like this on a linear scale where you have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 and so on out here, it gets absolutely crazy uh, when we have these parabolic moves. So you should look at this at a logarithmic scale where you are having the same percentage jumps out here. So these jumps are getting higher and higher in absolute numbers but uh, the logarithmic scale says that here jumps with 500% each time, um, something like that at least, from 20 to 100 to 500 to uh, 2000 to 10,000 to 50,000 and so on. So, and here we can see that there are getting a smaller and smaller percentage new uh, confirmed cases each and every day in mainland China. But here we can see for the rest of the world and here we can actually see that the curve is uh, quite steep still. And we can see that from day to day, we are getting a lot of new cases all around the world. So one of the ways you can see if this is, is starting to stop, if, it, if the coronavirus is, is almost over, is that you can see when this curve starts to go flat like this one, then there is a reasonable, um, you, you could uh, with reason, think that uh, the, the coronavirus is about to uh, disappear. Someone says that it can't resist heat as much, so when it gets into spring and summer, it will, it, will, um, it will disappear by itself, but nobody really knows. So as long as this blue line that says the rest of the world, as long as that is going up in an almost uh, ruler-based uh, line here, then we will definitely see more turmoil in the stock markets, without a doubt. I said to my subscribers uh, a while back when the first cases, uh, it, re it really started to grow in China, I said, as long as they can contain it in China, we shouldn't be too worried about the stock market. Um, and of course, it can be a bit cynical to talk about stock markets when people are dying, but that is what I do here. Um, but what I said is that if we all of a sudden have a thousand or 10,000 or 100,000 people that are sick in Europe or in the United States, then you'll see disruption. And that is what we are seeing uh, right now. This curve, by the way, the blue curve, is the same as you can see out here outside mainland China. Uh, we can see out here that it is going up quite steeply. And I have a number of websites where you, uh, I'll link to all of them below, where you can see all of these stats with numbers of, uh, of how many confirmed cases, how many deaths and so on. And um, well, it is spreading all over the world. And as far as I can tell from uh, WHO, uh, it is just a matter of time before pretty much every country in the world has uh, some cases of this. All right, but another way to see how a, a black swan event, uh, event and not only uh, the coronavirus, but all, of this, uh, all over the place, uh, black swan events, when they start to cling off, when they start to, to disappear, there's a good little tool that I sometimes use, and that is called Google Trends. You probably know it. But here, you can put in a search term, and here I put in Corona, and you can see over the last 90 days, you can see that there were not many searches on Google for Corona up until around um, the end of January, when it really started to hit the media, how bad things actually was in, in China. Up until then, uh, right here, I've searched the entire world. Of course, you can search for China or United States, or so, and then you get different numbers. But here you can see that uh, it really exploded here. Then it started to not disappear, but we're a bit off here. And that was, of course, at the time where they started to get it somewhat under control in China and really start to contain uh, and, and quarantine people that had it. But then all of a sudden, uh, here just within the last week, it really started to hit what we call the Western world, uh, Europe and, and United States. And all of a sudden we can see that the search numbers are exploding again. 
and this is actually quite a good indicator as to if something is trending and of course you can see it is say it is bad that corona is trending you could also try different search terms like coronavirus for instance we see the same pattern here and uh, down here you can see different uh, parts of the world what number uh, they have uh, i'm not really sure china must have some sort of uh, i don't know if they have closed down for the statistics uh, uh, that would be likely in, in china i think but down here you could see that um uh, that there are coronavirus news in in in, uh, in very hot growth here and coronavirus china uh, growth and china growth and so on and all of wuhan also the province in china where the coronavirus comes from and you can see here that they are all growing right now and that is often an indicator of that this black swan event is actually still going uh, just to give you another example here i mentioned bitcoin as a um, as a black swan event and let's just go a bit uh, further back here the last five years take a look at this graph um, this actually shows us the the black swan event and the bubble of bitcoin that it, it started to pick up in the media and people started to search for it here back in 15 and 16 when Bitcoin were uh, costed almost next to nothing. And then it in, of course, in, in waves here, sometimes a bit less, but you can see it growing. And this was in uh, 2017 when Bitcoin costed around $20,000 for one Bitcoin. And here you can see that the black swan event is starting to wear off and Bitcoin is just more or less getting uh, into being a mainstream word that of course gets some searches, but not this bubblish uh, search explosion here. So what I would recommend if you want to know if the coronavirus is on its way back and away from the media and lesser and lesser ill people, um, you should go down to maybe 90 or 30 days uh, search history here and then see when this trend starts to curve down and, and have a nice downtrend that would show us that less and less people are searching for it. So you can use that every single time where you are wondering if something is about to explode or how strong the trend is, then Google Trend is a fantastic tool. All right, the last thing today uh, not when is it over, but what to do now? Well, if you remember from my video yesterday, where I talked about the importance of having a plan, then of course you should follow your plan. Um, what I recommend right now, because my strategy is a trend following strategy, and I have been uh, I have been getting exit signals on a lot of my stocks, so of course I have sold them. Also. Um, or even though that I actually think that we'll get some sort of bounce. Nobody knows if that is a, a good strong bounce that leads into a new uptrend. I am doubting it a bit. Uh, if we see a bounce in the stock market, I would actually think that that would probably something like a, a short term uh, bounce or maybe what you call a dead cat bounce. Uh, if you haven't heard that term, it is um, a metaphor over that. Even uh, if if you if you throw a, a dead cat out from your balcony on on the third floor, then even though it is dead, it will still bounce a bit uh, from the earth uh, w when it hits. But it is it is still a dead cat, and that is a dead cat bounce in the market. Is that if the market has been dropping like the dead cat, it also uh, at some point will give a little bounce, but then it will continue down because the cat is dead. Okay, so what to do now? I'm not sure that this downturn is over, but I am sticking to my strategy. One thing that could be good to uh, consider is you know that I often use the, uh, the, the tool fast graphs here. And this one is showing us how the earnings uh, have been doing compared to the black line here, which is the price. Um, and the blue line is the average um, price earning ratio over time as well. So. What I would do now is that when I should look at stocks again, and I'll probably start looking at potential buys in a quite short while, then I'll try to find them in the stocks that are undervalued. I'm not buying stocks, as you might know, just because they're undervalued, but I'm buying stocks that are undervalued and uh, that are starting a good uptrend. Right here we have, um, actually we have Facebook, 
um, which has a very good earnings development here. A bit of a setback here, but then the estimates are huge earnings growth. Uh, Facebook is one of the uh, US stocks that definitely should be considered as soon as this Corona event is over, then we should consider uh, buying into, for instance, Facebook. Just let me, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take this as a stock advice or advice to buy or sell anything. It could be also something like, uh, at V that I have made a video about um, not so long ago that I'm very much in love with. And uh, if we're looking at at V here, they are also, uh, they've actually started a nice little uptrend and I am in it myself just as a disclaimer. But that is also something that is uh, quite undervalued if you ask me and has a very, very good upside uh, potential. Uh, and it could be a lot of, of other stocks, but there are still stocks that are up here, even though they have been shot a bit back uh, due to the coronavirus, they are still up here in overvalued. And I would go for something that had been sent a, a lot back. If you're a dividend investor, for instance, you are get, getting a lot better dividend yield uh, be, because the amount is the same, but uh, the price is way lower. So the, the effective yield is actually way better now. So you could go for good solid stocks that you have researched and that you really like, and then trying to maybe not pick the bottom, but buy them with a discount of 10 or 20 or 30%. Because I can promise you that the, the world and the stock market will bounce, it will get, get back on its feet at some point. It can take a month, it can take a year, it can take five years, but a good solid long-term approach for most people is actually very healthy and can be very lucrative. And I know a lot of values investors that I've been talking to lately that are of course, they are not thrilled about the coronavirus, but they are thrilled about the market's reaction because they are now sitting with a ton of different potential buy uh, candidates here where just a month or two ago, they had a hard time finding a good value candidate because everything had gone up way too much. But now a lot of good candidates have really lost both 15 or 20 or 25%. So they can now buy their favorite stocks with a very good discount. But first of all, what should you do now? You should make sure that you have a strategy. If you don't know how what part should be in that strategy, look at my video from yesterday. I'll link to it below as well. Um, I'm just giving a quick description of what should be in a strategy. So what should you do now? You should follow your strategy. And if you don't have a strategy, my advice from yesterday was then sell your stock and make a strategy and don't get into the market before you have a good and solid tested strategy. That's all for now. That was a big about black swans and the coronavirus, of course. And let's hope that this virus is soon over. I am not so sure, and I'm not sure if you have seen the last drops in the market, but only time will tell. I have a poor, poor record of predicting uh, the, the market when it turns. So that is why I, I am a trend follower uh, that is looking for confirmed trends. So I will not buy anything before I see a confirmed uptrend in the potential stocks I wanna buy. All right, that's all for now. If you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel, hit the like notification and all that stuff down there. You know the drill. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care of your money out there. Bye for now.